Hello, hi guys, welcome, welcome to my fun exercise. Konbawa, annyeonghaseyo, sawadika. Welcome to day 240. Time flies, right? 240 now. Woohoo! So, anyway, let's get going. As usual, my 30 minutes of cardio. And today we'll be back to abs again. Yeah. So, yesterday I did my arms training. <laughs> arms training. Upper arm training. A bit of a pet flex, I guess. <laughs> but today back to abs again. Yes. Got to lose, please. But my weight is affecting my spine, so no choice. Uh, but of course, as usual, you know, got to just focus on the oblique transverse muscle so that hopefully my abdomen uh, muscle will help support my spine problem. Yeah, and as usual, today we'll be uh, working on using the app slider with a trolley. <laughs> That's my makeshift uh, slider. Let's go, let's go. So let's talk about today's uh, topic. Quite a few. In fact, actually, all, of, all related to food. Can't think of it. Yeah, it's all related to food again. <laughs> Anyway, let's go, let's go! Hi guys again, thank you so much for watching. Kumbawa! Annyeonghaseyo! Sawadika! Sawahao! Sisei so kan. Thank you so much! Wait, is the video kind of tilted? Ah, okay, let me try to tilt it. Oops, so much. There's too much. There's too much! Is this better? Yeah, I think so. So let's go, let's go! It was slanted, I think. Anyway, hi guys! Again, konbawa, annyeonghaseyo, sawadika, pama hao, sisi ni mene souka, and her ni mene dian zan. Thanks for your likes, your love, and comments, and encouragement. Hope I encourage you guys as well to keep fit and stay healthy, okay? Especially now, the haze. Okay, today's not that bad. It went down, okay? But it slightly went up in the southern part of Singapore, but I think now it seems to be kind of in the okay zone, okay? It's not the lowest, but still the okay zone. Let's see, hopefully in the next few days, it's not going to get worse. Because the next few days, morning, I'll be helping my mom because she's moving out and um, to a new flat. So yeah, at last she got a owner, uh, she got someone buying her old old flat. So helping her to kind of like pack some stuff. Anyway, thank you so much again. Thank you, thank you. Do more rikado kazamas, kamsa hamida, sisiye tote, kamsiya. Salamat, kopukal, kamen, nandri, sayabad, istuti. Terima kasih, Danke Shun, Obrigado, Gratis, Muchas Gracias, Merci Buku, Spacebo, and Thank You. That's sign language. So 20 ways to say thank you to you guys. Oh, thank you. Thanks so much for your likes. So anyway, uh, let's talk about food. <laughs> I think 80% of the time, I'm always talking about fitness and food. Mostly food, I think. Like I said, I still have my obsession with food because I cook and bake for 240 days. I've been baking and cooking for well over 230 plus days at least. So, and so naturally, I have even more deeper appreciation and my relationship with food has kind of changed from one that is obsessive eating unhealthy and mindlessly eating just for the sake of eating, seriously, because I'm so, I'm such a glutton, seriously, I'm such a glutton. But now, um, because of this health change, right, so I tend to eat with, uh, more moderation with more mind um more planning let's put it this way in what i eat okay so wait hold on before that now it's 8 25 so i should exercise until 8 55 okay 30 minutes of cardio let's go let's go and let me check okay my heart rate is 120 it's going up for sure i always forget to turn this on and in 240 days so far, I have traveled 2,491 kilometers and burnt off 79,378 calories. Woohoo! Let's go, let's go. So, let's talk about food. <laughs> so, today's description yes, I just finished watching the final, final, final episode of MasterChef USA. Uh, earlier this year, there was MasterChef uh, Australia every year. At certain months, there's always Master Chef on different parts of the world. I haven't seen much of the other uh, continents or other countries. Mostly it's Australia and US. I love the Australia one because uh, there's so much you can learn from it. And just love the way they have such diversity and also their cuisine. It's not saying that US doesn't have. US is like one of the epitome because uh, Gordon Ramsay is there and he sets the tone. He's such a brilliant but also very very serious very strong chef 
So uh, a lot of things that he say, people listen and it can be very 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 harsh, that's for sure. So it's kind of fun. Anyway, there's also MasterChef Junior, so I do watch that as well, but mostly the US one. Actually, it felt only the US one. Anyway, so final, the finale just ended. I just watched it today. And uh, oh my god. Uh, actually, I really kind of thought the other contestant might win, but end up it was this second up in my mind. Because uh, she cooks with more home cooked style. You know, whereas Monster Chef seems to be wanting to elevate the home cook to a restaurant style, and the other cooks, the other, well, in the finale, kind of like cook restaurant style and very avant garde stuff. So, unfortunately, there's this guy, very young, a Harvard undergrad, who dropped out of Harvard to focus on cooking. And so, in a way, okay, I mean, like, respect that he actually didn't chase that dream of as a Harvard graduate and who knows, there may be greater things for him but he chose his passion which is great, okay, which I respect that a lot and so in the finale, unfortunately he got too clever his plating, everything is whoa, out of this world, seriously beautiful or at least it's very very avant-garde as I said but he undercooked a fish I mean that's like the death, seriously, once you undercooked a protein, that's it and you're the finale, I don't think so you can win, you know uh, so that's just too bad. Otherwise, I'm really, really curious what it's going to do for the final dish, the dessert. Anyway, so end up, it's the battle of the girls. Two ladies, one black, one white girl. Uh, both quite senior, I would say. Not They're not super young. And so, uh, the home cook, uh, who makes like a very home style dish, she went home with it. And she has a lot of story in it. You really can, I really do have tears in my eyes when she talks about her food and uh, about her her mom and stuff like that so so you can feel it she's a southern black lady so you know there's a lot of soul as they say a lot of soul in her food so you may still happy yeah 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 because she kind of like sets the precedence and opens up to ask home cook like you know if you put your heart to it you really can win this thing and you know be a master chef level kind of stuff of course i'm not saying i will be but i just started learning to cook and bake on my own i did not and any screw or whatsoever. My internet, YouTube, uh, uh, recipe, um, online recipe, uh, what do you call that? Website, uh, like my chef, uh, my school, so to speak. Uh, but that's the fun thing. I often mix and match, so a lot of things kind of like definitely not restaurant like, but I cook with healthy ingredients and the way that I like it because you know, it's for myself, you know, I'm not cooking for others. So that's the difference. Anyway, cook the way that you like. Important is has to be healthy if you're on this like me health journey. Cause you want to reduce the amount of carbohydrates or calories or or maybe the unhealthy processed food and reduce the trans fat, uh, lower your sugar level or sodium level. So a lot of things, you know, a lot of things you have to consider because we can't use so-called normal, so-called uh, commercial grade ingredients because they tend to be like I said more unhealthy okay but yes they are, they are tasty okay no doubt that's why that's what got me into this shape in the beginning you know until beginning this year because uh, I love to eat and eat all sorts of those processed food and all the commercialized food which is always super sweet super salty or super fattening or again super high carbohydrates Kind of stuff. So that leads me to what did I cook today? So and you see the description I wrote. Uh, I seldom do this technique. I won't say it's a technique even, I'm just being lazy actually. <laughs> I threw the pasta into the rice cooker. Okay? Put a bit of water. I really don't know how much because I don't really often cook pasta. I can't remember. Maybe I did it before like many many years ago. So what I, what I did was this. I put probably Okay, I, put, I did a uh, brown rice pasta, okay? So basically, it's eh, not brown rice, whole wheat, whole wheat pasta. So this kind of pasta tend to absorb more water, right? So I had them inside, it's about, I think one inch. <laughs> it's not a lot of pasta, okay? Like, I'm moderating the amount of pasta I eat. Almost one inch, I think. One inch or one half inch of water, which is quite a lot. And I did put salmon inside it. Literally, I just put salmon inside it and a meatball. But what, what's the difference is, I don't just put water, I did put uh, a bit of the white stock, uh, white fish stock, uh, mirin, which means it has some sugar and some rice alcohol, some flavour inside it, 
and just set it to this quick cook for I think it's probably only an hour or plus. And uh, wow, I cook other stuff. Actually, not much. <laughs> I'm just baking. I have like salmon skin. I put it into my oven, just let it bake until it's crispy. And I did have pork chop, but I did not season it. I just want to taste the original flavor. Because I've not cooked with pork chop or this pork chop in particular before. So I threw it also into the grill oven and just grilled it. I know, bad move, because after that it came very very dry. Yeah, the whole thing like ugh, dry, not moist. And when you bite to it, it's almost like a pork jerky kind of thing because I literally kind of dry it out. So that got me thinking, of course, the next time I cook it, I think I may have to just do it over the, the grill, over, not grill, like over the hot, hot pan or something, baste it with butter and of course add all sorts of aromatics yeah today I actually forgot to put the aromatics I should have put the mixed herbs so anyway that's that still edible but just very dry at least it's not burnt until it's not edible uh, and I have this curry vegetable stew that I made yesterday so it's yogurt wait soy milk base cream uh, I think I did yeah okay, I did put some coconut milk and of course the curry powder and I have like spinach, corn. I did put some polenta inside as well. So basically, not polenta as in corn grits. So it's a bit, it's a bit like polenta base. And so things thicken out. And that's my curry stew. So kind of like after the pasta was done, and all of them puffed out huge. So that's a that's a cool, cool or interesting thing. When pasta you put it into like rice cooker, I think there's a bit of this steaming action going on. So it soaked out so much water, it puffed up a lot, right? So, and yet, the base is in contact with the rice cooker. So the base are slightly burnt. So I thought that was very interesting. Uh, oh, hi guys. Hi, Rick. Hi, you, man. Thanks for watching. Oh, thanks for your support. Thank you, thank you. See you next time, guys. So I was talking about what I cooked today. So what happened is this pasta that was in the rice cooker, it puffed up a lot. So it doubled a lot of size, rather than just cooking over the pan or pot. Uh, which typically you don't let it cook but it's, it didn't go mushy, that's the thing that's an interesting thing, it didn't go mushy so because I think this has been a whole wheat pasta it absorbs quite a lot of water still retain the shape but it passed out to like 2-3 times the size and the base is against the rice cooker the metal rice cooker actually slightly burnt so it's browned off I think because of the mirin I put inside again mirin has sugar so it kind of caramelizes so it's a sweet caramelized bottom and cooked pasta, you know, on the top. And I put this stew, curry stew that I made yesterday over it. Oh my god, so good! So I don't know, next time I think I may just cook pasta this way using a rice cooker, seriously. And then I'll just adjust the amount of water just to see how much is enough so I don't make it too soggy. So I thought that was a revelation for me and it was tasty. I, I liked it this way. Uh, I know some people like it even more al dente, so then maybe, who knows. To reduce the cooking time maybe by three quarter or even half the time let's see how it goes yeah actually i should stop it halfway take it out and test how tender it is and see if it's still burnt uh, if you want to burn it you can of course cook pasta and then kind of like baste it or not baste it pan fry a pasta so that you get caramelization of the pasta and yet you still have the tenderness and how done thing that you want so yeah that'll be great as well so anyway so that's my meal of the day and yes, I have that salmon skin which I baked, it's super crispy. I did add well, some seaweed, um, uh, seaweed, like, uh, what do you call that? Wakame, I think, wakame. So it's like seaweed, uh, salted seaweed, uh, pre it's pre-packed, yes. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure there's some other ingredients on it. So fortunately, yeah, that's the only thing that I have not learned to make from scratch. I mean, who makes seaweed from scratch, seriously? So, uh, unless you buy the raw kelp, okay, that's, that, which I do have. So then you can put in soup and stuff like that. But this is seaweed, okay? Or labor, if I labor or labor. Uh, Korean seaweed. So I had that because it was the offer, so I bought it. It's from Do Donkey. So that uh, seaweed. And I, of course, as usual, my fresh lettuce. And I did. <laughs> I kind of like hot boy, or should I say microwave hot boy, my quill eggs. Because I bought quill eggs the other day. I'm st Seriously, this journey so far, 200 plus days, although I've cooked quite a few different ingredients, I haven't cooked a quail egg yet. So I thought I'm going to try to see what else I can do with quail eggs. You know, you could of course make small little mini quail egg fry, or you could 
it'll be a waste like, if you actually dump it into soup because you would rather use normal eggs which I have. So it's just that if you have boiled little quail eggs, uh, it's only two minutes seriously that fast in a microwave. And it's very nice and bouncy, still slightly uh, soft yolk in the middle. It's not wet but soft. And so it gives a very interesting look to the meal itself. And I know quail egg, you have to be careful, can't eat it too often because the cholesterol, if I'm not wrong, uh, level is quite high than normal eggs. But anyway, it's just fun. So always try different ingredients, different eggs, different technique to just make things interesting. So today's dish is pretty interesting, so thank god I made it, yeah. Uh, and it's delicious to me, of course, it's very subjective. And just now, so the third thing is, I just make bread, yeah! So, I don't remember baking bread. I did make bread like bread rolls, right? That I put black seed and, uh, what's that? Psyllium, psyllium husk. And so a lot of other flour, and it tend to be more, you know, wet. So once it's in the, uh, if I put it overnight, it will tend to harden. But it's still quite moist. Now, the bread I made just now, the ratio of flour to water, to liquids, is quite high. So what happens is, I kind of assume that this bread will become like a brioche bread or rye bread kind of texture, where it's very crusty, very dry. So for this kind of bread, it's very good for pairing it with soup or putting creamy spread, something that's very moist so it absorbs, so it gets soft enough and yet when you bite, it's crunch and it holds the shape so I'm gonna see it later it's not in the oven cooling so I baked it just before this and uh, so I did two batch, one that has sweetened with sugar and raisins the other one is just plain bread uh, but I did not use the normal pancake because I don't have the normal flour I'm using wholemeal flour again for health sake so wholemeal flour tends to be more dense so I was mixing it but it did not get to a dough stage Maybe I do need to mix it even more, I really roll the dough So I have never rolled a dough before, seriously So so far all the cakes or bread roll that I made Are like full of baking powder or soda In this case I don't use yeast And uh, because I try not to use yeast because Especially now, after my DNA results did show that I have a higher affinity to get celiac disease which means people who are sensitive to gluten so bread and a lot of the kind of grains uh, that has gluten you know I have to be careful with it so flour, white flour for me is not so great because it's for gluten what makes the bread so you know the dough of the bread and the stringiness so that when you bake it and it has that webbing, webbing and holes it's not just the, what we call the leavening effects of gas being released by the yeast or baking powder or baking soda depends on your, on your recipe but it's the gluten the protein strands uh, inside the gluten that cause that fluffiness okay so so if you have affinity to like have issue of gluten processing gluten uh, such bread is very bad because it's high 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 in gluten to achieve that kind of uh, webbingness that kind of fluffiness but of course there are other ingredients to create similar effects so um, that's something I'm still exploring so just now, uh, in a way yeah, this bread that I made yes, there'll be somewhat uh, has a, a certain amount of gluten because the amount of wheat flour that I use in this, in this recipe I don't know how tough it will be because just now I think of it as cooling it's like, I kind of like kind of like, kind of hit it and it's like cut, 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 it's like oh my god, it's super crusty it looks super dry <laughs> So it's definitely not a fluffy bread, it's like a brioche So I think the ratio is super high so I'd say the flour to the water So I think next time I have to balance it, I'll try other balance of ratio Because the ingredients, recipe, I mean the recipe that I got from is meant for normal flour I really don't know how much for whole meal, whole wheat flour Which is, like I said, it has a husk and everything So the whole wheat flour don't tend to actually gel together make into a dough So it did not rise uh, And it used very little yeast, I think so I think next time I might use more yeast or I might have to activate the yeast so to speak because I use instant yeast I thought instant yeast could just throw it in without having to activate the yeast activate means you actually put it into warm water, slightly warm, tepid, tepid water they call it and uh, to activate by having bubbling and you know it's an active yeast maybe the yeast is dead, I don't know yeast is an active organism, it is so I saw the other day a meme people are saying that they are like Bakers are like murderers, so to speak. They see thousands of yeast 
and feed them the sugar. Yeah, you don't have to put sugar, and yeah, what's the sugar, the flour, or whatever sugar you have inside to activate it because the yeast is an organism that eats the sugar. And so basically, you are like giving yeast the organism a false hope, and then you kill them by making them to death while they release all the gas to puff up the dough, which is like their burial, <laughs> burial inside your, your bread. And then you are eating, technically, you are eating the yeast corpse. Yeah, dead yeast is inside your bread. So if you think that way, it's quite gross. Seriously, it's quite gross. But oh man, damn, is bread real tasty, man. So <laughs> that's how it works. If you know how food are being prepared and baked or cooked, you realize a lot of a lot of things and details that people don't think about. Seriously, like for meat, for example, if let's say I'm a butcher or someone's a farmer, then you will know about the way you butcher and kill the animals and from a living organism to now on your plate date a piece of meat. So that transition is what most of us don't see and therefore we don't think much about and food to us is just advertising. Right? But when you know more of the details, it's a bit gory and then you have a new found relationship with food. You'll be like, oh my god, I am so respectful of the kind of living food or living organism or animals uh, that you were before and not the piece of meat that's like fried or braised or, or stew or, or grilled and so tasty. But that transition, yeah, it's quite something. Anyway, hi guys, thank you so much. Hi Danny, hello, hello. How are you guys? Thank you so much again. Uh, thanks for your support and your likes and your love and comments. Hope I support you guys, or should I say hi, and encourage you guys as well to, you know, start exercising or start keeping fit. You know, changing your diet and stuff like that. Again, I had enough friends in the past who had passed away or had had disease still from lifestyle diseases, you know, that could be preventable. Diabetes, gout, heart problems, liver issue, and a lot of this stems from also the diet. So if you could change your diet, seriously, it can be preventable. Or at least it could even reverse or get better your you know, the condition of your body. And for me, exercise is a sure faster way of course not just to lose the weight but to strengthen my muscles because I need it to support my heavy load and especially my back since I had a slip this I had surgery 12 years ago so no choice I have to take care of and change my health for good if not now when right don't wait until it's a matter of too little too late and you add to the statistic of yet another person who depends on medication or, or, or medical devices to sustain your life and that's not quality life seriously that's not Let's go, let's go, come about there. Okay, 55, right? Ah, 10 more minutes to go. Let's go, let's go. So yeah, usually like, oh my god, today 15 minutes I can't finish my topic that I'm talk about. So today, you know, squat master chef in LA, on, of course on streaming somewhere, <laughs> and uh, cook that interesting pasta dish, I think, because like I use rice cooker instead, and so it popped up quite a lot. It's not a dante anymore, it's quite to cook through. So it's not mushy, it's not mushy, but it's pretty, pretty soft. It's definitely not a dante. <laughs> but the bottom is kind of slightly charred, or should I say slightly caramelized. So that's, that's uh, interesting. And the taste is great. I, I mean, I like it. Of course, it can be more, more, more of dante. Okay, that's of course another texture to it. And of course, the last thing is yeah, I bake the bread. So I'll take pictures, I'll post it out soon, hopefully. And I'll show you what I put on my bread. Because I have buttercream, I have cheese. I have wagyu, yes, I do have some Japanese beef, of course not the high grade ones. So I might make, who knows, maybe a meat patty, a hot top of bread, the brioche bread, and uh, who knows, butter it up, or cheese it, let the cheese melt, uh, or put egg, yeah, put egg, use a pills egg, make mini <laughs> burger. Uh, yeah, I meant to want to make mini burgers, I haven't done it yet. I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do, do that soon. Since I have all the ingredients, I have lettuce, I have Japanese cucumbers, I love Japanese cucumber more. Tomato, yes, I have tomatoes. Not the lower grade ones, I like the higher grade tomatoes, which is much more red and much more firm. And, uh, yes, cheese. So in a way, in a way okay, I don't have bacon though. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can still make, you know, a mini burger, so to speak, a slider, yes, that's the word. Making a slider, a burger slider. Since the bread I make is like this small, it's a small loaf, it's a small miniature loaf. Because I'm testing out this ingredient. I don't remember actually baking a proper bread 
the beast during these 240 days of this journey of me uh, not just keeping fit but also like I said learning to cook and bake so far I made cheesecake I made pancake, Japanese pancake I made all sorts of small liver varieties of muffin or brownies uh, cakes uh, and all sorts of like I said ingredients that's inside uh, but bread no because I never had a I guess the patients will like, oh my god, prove the bread. Because after you roll the dough, you get to prove it over an hour, and then you bake it, and then you can prove it further. It's like, it takes many hours. There are people who actually do it overnight, and so it takes like two days to make bread. I know it puts in a lot of effort and a lot of love, so to speak. But if there's a way to make it shorter, save the time, even better. But who knows, I think one day I might try that traditional route to make proper, proper bread. They had to proof for hours and uh, cookies as well. Yeah, they are cookies that literally makes two days to make. Because the longer you let it rest and absorb and kind of like do its thing, chemically it will change its texture. And so when you bake it, uh, the feeling is different. You know, the crunchiness and the chewiness and stuff like that. But I'm always a quick like, I guess slightly impatient in cooking and baking. So I tried to make it within an hour or two hours at most and so that I eat it or cast it. Uh, yeah, so that's the thing. Or the lazy way, throw it in a rice cooker, boil it, broil it, steam it. Uh, or put it in a cast island skillet and quickly just, you know, brown it. The my luck reaction, as they say. Brown it or just throw it inside the oven and toast the hell out of it or grill it or bake it. So, yeah, that's my repertoire so far. Kind of limited, I know, but it's still way more advanced than what I had done before, which is literally just instant noodles. <laughs> so, huge difference, I'd say, huge difference. All right, four minutes left. Let's go, let's go. Woo. What's the next song? Let me find a better song. All right, got four minutes left. I could play, what's this? Gavin's Magical Rainbow Cat? Not cat, cat, cat or something by Ant Snare. Okay, okay, let's go, let's go. Let's see my heart rate. Ugh, a bit low, 118. Okay, let's go. Come on, come back there. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Woo, yeah, speed up the tempo now. Oh, hi guys, thank you so much again for your support and watching your likes and love. Hope I encourage you guys as well to stay fit and you know stay healthy change your diet if it's terrible seriously because a lot of things a lot of disease could be prevented by changing your diet oh hi arigato gozaimasu domo arigato shishie tose kamsia tarimakase salamat kopun kap thank you thank you let's go let's go kampate okay my heart rate fell out oh yes let me out 100 and 29 now. Woo. And my cycling at 20, 20, 21 kilometers per hour. Let's go, let's go. This song, Gavin's Magical Rainbow Cataclysm or something, Cata something. He got cut. And <laughs> it's by this artist called Ensnare. Underscore. Yeah, there's an underscore in his name. E-N-S-N-A-R-E. -E. Underscore again. Ensnare. I love usually like you know electronic music like this has a strong beat, tempo, uh, relatively consistent so it's great for, you know, cardio exercise and of course after this, we'll get my remaining time of doing my muscle training today, the abdomen, so I'll be doing abs sliding, planking, crunches okay, not this way, but this way, just up crunches, Russian twists so all this helps to focus on the four major groups for muscles on your abdominal area, you know, the oblique transverse, I think, or oblique transverse muscle, and the rectus, rectus abdominis. Okay, I need to go and check again what's the scientific name. But there are four major groups in your uh, abdomen. The back muscles, I'm not so sure yet. I haven't gone ahead and researched it. But yeah, these are the muscles I need to help strengthen because of my back problem, slip this, had surgery done. Too relaxed so far, so no joke. Got to lose the weight, lighten my back, and strengthen my abdomen and the back as well. My core muscles, as they say. 
to like I say. So as I age again, it's just like less than half a year, I'm 40 years old. And as we age, we are always deteriorating. Our muscles, our bones, it's definitely not getting younger and stronger unless you actually exercise or take care of it. Uh, so that's why I have to do it. It's either now or I don't need to be a case of too late too too late too beautiful, you know? Oh hi, who's that? David. David Kito, hi. You always talk alone. Yeah, I know. I'm okay to talk alone actually. No, I'm not actually true. I have friends here who often replies me and so I'll kind of like interact. Sometimes my classmate from Melbourne, uh, uh, Kenny. So Kenny Tan, he'll reply, he'll actually say things here and I'm like, how talk. But I'm okay talking alone because you know why? This video thing is about for me as a vlog and it's for me to actually use it as a way to uh, justify, not justify, sorry, <laughs> to actually uh, be accountable for my actions. So even if no one listen, that's totally fine. Because in the beginning, I'm doing this. Why I'm doing streaming is because it's easier. Seriously, previously I was recording video and uploading it. So it's like one more step, kind of a hassle. So I might just stream, at the end of it, I can just push a button, it just push it out and that's fine, you know. And it does actually encourage people. I have so many people in the past, almost every other week, they'll message me, not just say encourage me, but asking about, oh, you know, what they could have done. Although I'm not, like I said, I'm not in position as a medical professional, but you can use me as a, I guess, inspiration that says that, you know, if I can do it, losing 23 kg in over seven months uh, is doable, okay? It's just whether you want to put your mind to it and stuff like that. And then other friends like Satoshi-san, Satoshi, uh, he's not here today, uh, from Japan. And I got friends sometimes from US and UK who actually drops in. Although at this timing, uh, it's quite early, I think, early in the morning for them. Or they are in the middle of their work, working hours. So it depends anyway. Sometimes I do exercise in the afternoon or in the morning. So it depends. Anyway, <laughs> thanks David. Uh, I'm not sure which David is this, but okay. I've got quite a few friends called David. Uh, so thank you for your question. Or is that a comment? That's cool. Let's go, let's go. Gampata! Oh, perfect. Yatta! 8.56. So I'm done with my 30 minutes of cardio exercise. And now it's like 129 bits per minute. That's good, that's good. Cool, cool, cool. Let's go, let's go. Actually, I'm also not really talking alone. I'm like speaking, sharing my day, vlogging my life, and uh, yeah, people do watch it. And after it, it's uploaded in, in Facebook, and I do upload it in YouTube, and I do put it inside my uh, WordPress blog as well, kind of like just to archive. So in a way, all these are literally me archiving my life, so to speak. Okay, let's go. Let's stretch. This one's quite a positive song actually by Kerry Tell You Tell You. Title Kimiga Ine Kuretara. I'm not sure what it means actually. <laughs> I saw the translation and forgotten what it exactly means, but something to do about social media or like wanting someone wanting to actually be, to aspire. And if you see the music video, Kerry Tell You Tell You is like acting out like you know she's bothered by what her comments in the social media. But anyway, this song I like came in and it's like encouraging you to like hey you know you can actually do better in life and stuff like that it's a very positive song that's great let's go let's go come back there come back there okay. let's go yeah some stretch and here this muscle which is the oblique wait let me see oops sorry I said they depressed something and paused it okay so there's the external oblique muscles here and there's the internal oblique muscles just behind it and there is the transverse transverse abdominis muscle which is about three quarters of the way and of course a six pack known as rectus abdominis abdominis <laughs> muscle i'm not looking to like get a six pack or anything seriously uh again this is not to, i'm not doing this exercise just to look good or like uh you know be model or whatever get six pack i don't care about those 
most important, my weight goes down, my weight go down uh, because of my back problem and uh, stay fit. Okay, and my blood test and my body composition measurements all have shown improvement, so that's the best thing. I need to bring down, of course, the visceral fat, which is not the least fat here. Visceral fat is the fat that's inside, that's covering your organs. That's even more important because that has linked to getting diabetes and other uh, health diseases. So, lost count. That's okay. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Sitting down and so pretty sedentary and that's not very good. Uh, so we need to stretch as much as I can actually. Yeah, I need to keep getting better at uh, doing more stretches uh, throughout the day. Okay, let's go. One. Based on my own history, I uh, realized that if I do the other exercise, it becomes tougher for me to do the crunches and uh, the Russian twist. So, crunches, Russian twist, leg raise, <laughs> abs slider, then planking. Yeah, I did that. Oh, and Russian twist. Okay, let's go. Again, 
such a joke. Please take care of your health, guys. Okay, I encourage you guys to actually you know keep fit, stay healthy, uh, change your diet if you know yours is in a terrible state or something. And especially if you do have disease or problem now, I mean it's really to a certain extent diet and exercise can help either reduce it or reverse even. Okay, so check it out. Seriously, go and read up online. There's a lot of such information, and that's how I started all this. Read up more, understand, and I'll be approaching a lot of different doctors, endocrine doctors, and uh, my dietitian, my fitness instructor as well, and so various people and did the various tests to see. Even recently I did my DNA test, which has been out and yes, I haven't recorded that video yet. Uh, I will do so someday because <laughs> I'm still processing it and uh, I want to probably do it in multiple parts so I can focus on talking about each factors because there's over 500 reports in the DNA results to over 20 categories so that's a bit to go through and I say one thing someone wants to like listen I was long of lecture, right? Yeah, it's super boring. I mean, I'll feel bored about it. Let's go. Thanks for watching, thanks for likes, for love, for comments and support. Hope I also encourage you guys to actually stay fit <laughs> and keep healthy, seriously. Especially now with the hazy situation. Really help, uh, gotta take care of your health even more. Okay, let's go, let's go. One. Four, five, 
six, seven, twenty-eight, nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, five, six, seven, Only about one to two kg, if I'm not wrong. Uh, full of coins, it's pretty heavy, but that's, that's my medicine ball, so to speak. Okay, let's go. Thank you. 
of sweat coming down this way.
Tschüss, ich mach Pappe. Some exercise that uh, they recommend or some fitness instructor that between uh, each set to rest like one minute. So it really depends, of course, to individual. Okay, let's go. I'm gonna rest ten more seconds. Anyway, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hi. Konbawa, annyeonghaseyo, samadika. Thank you so much. See you in the next So as usual guys, push myself back a bit. Yeah, as usual guys, please do take care of your mental health, internet health, and physical health. Uh, as always, uh, sleep well, rest well, eat well, and there's something that I'm still working on. <laughs> Eating better, healthy ingredients, and also in the way uh, my sleep pattern, yeah, that's still, still kind of an you know, adjustment. Uh, still sleep pretty late, I guess, you know, but at least I slept 7 8 hours, so that's a good, good thing. So, next few days, uh, I'll be helping my mom to actually pack up stuff because she's moving house. Yay! Anyway, so that's it. Uh, as usual, please stress free, okay? Stay stress free, manage your stress because stress really triggers so many things in life um, and a lot of illnesses actually can be caused by it. Trigger, triggered by stress alone. Okay, that's it. Uh, sayonara, oyasumina sai, selamat malam, selamat tidur, anyo kaseyo, wan sang hao, wan han la, ta liang, si si ni Okay, see you tomorrow. And that's it. Goodbye, sayonara, zai jian. Bye bye.